we're back. I've not been gone very long. This is episode seven. Um, following up from what we said yesterday, we did meet with Neil Brown today. Um, we will be discussing what we learned, uh, what we observed uh, during that press conference to open practice. But welcome in again. This is the seventh edition of Musings from the Mountains, the video podcast uh, from WVSports.com. Once again, I am Keenan Cummings, and I bless you with uh, my pink shirt with lobsters on it. That probably means you should listen to me. And I'm Patrick Kotnick, staff writer for WVSports.com. I don't have anything on too exciting, just, you know, company. He's actually branded. He's, he's branding. The, <laughs> for the brands. All yeah, for, for the, brand. the brand. Not me, though, if you, if you watch these. Uh, Neil's press conference today, pretty candid, opened up talking about how disappointed he was with the first team offense, how pleased he was with the second team offense. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the ebb and flow of camp. You're going to get this. Uh, the day before, the defense dominated. The uh, offense really struggled, first team that is. They came back with a vengeance, uh, played really well today. I think the thing that stood out on the negative side, I guess maybe didn't stand out is the word I'm looking for, is procedural penalty, penalties, mistakes, drops, stuff you don't want to see out of your offense. The, the, the message from Brown continues to be, for both sides of the ball, all three phases, really, the bad can't be terrible. And the bad has been terrible, which has really hurt this team in instances. Uh, you can not play your best and still win football games right now that that team this team has to get better in that department yeah i agree with you i mean a lot a lot of what brown said i believe just echoed what we've already known about this team since the spring and here into fall camp we know that the defense has done some great things defense def, uh, first team defense definitely looks a lot stronger than the offense uh and that you, you hear a lot of offensive players talking about especially during the spring especially from uh colton mckibbitts i remember talking about how much this defense moves around how many uh, things they can disguise. So really, I feel like that was probably evident today, according to Brown. But a lot of it just echoed a lot of the question marks that are still on offense, the quarterbacks, uh, taking care of the football. Still need, to see, still need to see some more consistency out of a lot of those positions, especially quarterbacks and it looks like receivers as well. And it doesn't mean press panic, because like I said before, the offense played well the day before. This is so what time. Yeah, this is what you're going to have. It's going to happen in fall camp. You're going to have days where they're good. They're going to have days when they're bad. But that's the point. You have to get to the point where it's, even you're consistent and that just has not happened yet for really either phase either phase of, the, of this west virginia football team um a couple guys that stood out today uh, i thought it was interesting taj austin had four sacks after what brown called his worst practice uh, friday mm -hmm. so he bounced back in a big way darius stills who has uh, a bag of potato chips on his shoulder from the way he was recruited and has been overlooked in his career uh dominated today uh on the interior of the defensive line. And Josh Chandler continues to play well. Tay Mayo. Tay. Yeah, Tay Mayo. Uh, the guy that if you've watched or read anything I've talked about is, is one of my guys that I really felt was going to play this year. I thought was going to make an impact. Um, had a pick six and continues to develop. So you had some positives. You had some positives at wide receiver. You know, George Campbell and Sean Ryan proved why West Virginia went and got them. Mm -hmm. You know They were made plays down the field vertically, according to Brown. So there were positives. But the positives have to become consistent. And, and, and again, we can talk about potential every day of the week. Potential will not win you a football game. It, it has to turn into production. Um, interestingly enough, you know, Patrick's been kind of cooking up something on the freshman cornerbacks. And Brown addressed that today. What kind of stood out to you, Patrick? Uh, well, uh, regarding the freshman cornerbacks, I mean, yeah, he said this is this is pretty much a young group. And based off what Coach Adai said yesterday, I mean, they're growing. I mean, there's... That's one thing he really emphasized going into fall camp is that, you know, they, they got to grow. Now they have two older guys. They got leaders at Hakeem, ba Hakeem Bailey um, and Keith Washington. But still, they got to see some growth. They still got to continue to see some growth out of Nick Troy Fortune, uh, another uh, freshman there, uh, Tay Mayo. And I always forget, there's always to two. To Corey Turner. To Corey Turner. I always remember two of the three, just can never get full three. Uh Really, those guys just need to continue to grow. But the thing is that he said, you know, really physically they've been outstanding. Now they're, when their minds catch up with, with that physicality, uh, then he thinks they're going to have some great things. But right now it's still, you know, a work in progress. They, they say two out of three ain't bad, so, <laughs> so that's not bad. Uh, the thing I thought was interesting was, was Brown did mention a little bit about how Tay Mayo is, you know, he's tough. He can get in there. He needs to develop physically. Uh, Fortune is kind of what they want right now physically. So those guys are going to play, and another freshman that's going to play is going to be Tyke Smith. He made no doubt about that today. They moved him. Uh, as, we, as we mentioned in Episode 6 uh, yesterday, they moved Tyke to more of his natural spot of safety, and, and I think he's going to really excel there. That really fits him, and they've got reps to give. 
Uh, West Virginia has added an Australian punter. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. One strike, two strike, not three strikes, you're out. There is an Australian punter on the roster. Crocodile Punty has uh, the blue lock provided. I wish I could have said I came up with that. I did not. I'm not I'm that talented. You come up with that. I'm not that talented. I'm very surprised. Uh, but yeah, jo Josh Groden from LSU. Uh, rugby style punter can do a lot of different things. He actually was an all SEC freshman uh, performer in his first year with the Tigers. Um, averaged about 41 yards a kick. Had some inconsistencies. Ended up becoming their pooch punter. Um, interesting. The interesting stat that I can't get over is almost half his punts, or over half his punts, 47 of, of the 96 kicks he had ended up being inside the 20, mm -hmm. which field position, we've talked about hitting yards, that's where West Virginia has to win. It's, this changes the dynamic of the entire punting room. We've discussed punting probably more on this show than anybody wants to talk about. Brown even acknowledged today, he kind of dodged the question because this had been in the works, you know, when I asked it er earlier this week. So West Virginia's addressed their punting. They now have experience there. Anything about that stands out to you? I mean, we've said it before. They don't recruit graduate transfers just to stand around. So obviously this was a need, and I feel like he's very well. He's, he's going to be very well involved in this position battle after he gets acclimated. I know he needs to go through so many days in a helmet, then he has to be on shoulder pads, then he'll be in full pads. But very interesting, and it's very, it addresses a need, too. I think it's very interesting, too, that LSU was number seven last year in punt efficiency. Really, he was, he was just a really great pinpoint accurate short distance punter um, 12 of 16 punts last season were inside the 20 as well so a lot of great background information an article by Brody Miller uh, in the athletic about his background information what he's been through so I really feel like if this is a good move by West Virginia we'll see how how he, how he pans out here during fall camp but obviously addresses the need and keep in mind too like I just said graduate transfers aren't recruited just to stand around. I feel like he's going to be very much involved here in the position battle. And it came down to connections. Yeah, there were some connections there with, with the Pro Kick Australia guys and the guys on staff. So West Virginia addresses a big need, um, answers some questions in the process, because we got to assume that, as Patrick's mentioned, he's going to be your guy, at least this year. So they answer some questions there. Uh, punting, I guess you can finally put a check mark by that. We do know who is probably going to be punt, probably, I think it's fair to say. Most likely. Most yeah. likely. Going to be playing for West Virginia. Um, final takeaway for me is just how Neil kind of pointed to you know, these these times when, when certain unit struggles isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a teachable moment. Mm -hmm. They can look at the tape, which he said the tape doesn't lie. You're gonna you're, they're gonna expose people that don't play well. It teaches people that think they're playing well that maybe they aren't. Maybe they need to listen more to coaching, and that's not, that just naturally happens. I'm not saying anyone's being defiant. Maybe they need to hone in a little bit, work on some things that. Really, it's going to make them a better team, and and, and that's one of the positives with this. Uh, you, you know, you could name your long snapper as one of your standouts right now. We're a week into camp. They've had one scrimmage with officials. A lot of this stuff's going to play out, and that's no disrespect, obviously. I think West Virginia is an excellent long snapper, but you're not going to get a big list. Uh, you you want to challenge guys. You want guys to get better, and if you're if you're hitting on all cylinders right now. Something's probably wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you need to get better. That's the point of fall camp. And I think you're going to continue to see that. Um, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, as I've mentioned before, we're, we're excited about this. Um, we're also excited about our promo. If you'll have to add this every single time we do one of these. Subscribe. Because if you haven't taken advantage of this and you've been watching this, what are you doing? We are going to give you an annual subscription. Well, actually, we're going to give you an annual subscription plus three months for $75 which is already $25 off an annual, and then we're going to give you $75 to go get Adidas gear. Get it. Do it. Now. Okay? Okay, by next time next time we do this, which we're off tomorrow, we will not be having one. Uh, maybe Monday after player interviews, I would say is likely. If not, then definitely Tuesday or Wednesday. So tune in. Um, excited about what we're doing here. Excited about West Virginia Fall Camp. Football's right around the corner, guys. Thanks for tuning in again to Musings from the Mountains.